Superman isn't Jesus. I actually made a whole video about that recently. Maybe you saw it. Point is, no matter how much directors and artists in recent years like to create Christ symbolism with old Clark Kent over here, it doesn't really fit. And that video got a lot of responses, a lot of counterpoints, and no small amount of insults thrown at it in the comments and across the internet. So today, call me George Costanza because I'm double dipping. This is Superman Isn't Jesus 2, the re un Jesusing. Rebuttals came in many shapes and sizes. I responded to some directly, but there were so many others that I literally couldn't for all of them, especially since a lot of people were kind of just repeating the same flawed points. So that's what we're doing here, looking critically at a couple of these oft-repeated justifications for the largely cinematic habit of Jesusing soups. The first one is mainly with regard to Zack Snyder's habit of visually or narratively casting Clark as Christ, that this isn't Snyder really making this link, not straightforwardly. It's not that Snyder's going for Superman as Jesus, no, it's Snyder suggesting that this is how the world sees him. That the denizens of the DC Universe see him as a divine messiah figure, not Snyder himself, and that this is what Snyder is trying to portray. And you know what? If the DCEU had started with Batman v Superman, if these parallels had begun Begun with that film, I'd be fine with this. That film does take the public perception of Superman and explore it, and a lot of the more godly imagery BBS boasts is to be found in scenes where others besides the viewer are witnessing Clark. But the DCEU didn't begin here, and neither did these parallels. Man of Steel kicked off that world, and also kicked off this version of the Link. For the specifics on how, again, it's something I go into in that first video, but crucially, the world's perception of Superman isn't a major focus here. It is an idea that bubbles up to the surface a little from around the halfway mark on, but before then, the world has no idea Clark even exists. More to the point, in a lot of the most blatant visual linkages, there's really no one else there except us, the viewer. The film's first big gaudy typos comes after Clark rescues the oil rig guys and is floating underwater, but they can't see him anymore. It's just the camera and Clark. We are not inhabiting anyone else's perspective here except Snyder's. Then there's probably the most blatant one, which comes after Clark's first symbolic death and rebirth aboard Zod's ship. And the only person here to see it besides us and Snyder is Jor-El. In moments like this, we aren't seeing how the world sees Superman. We're seeing how the film sees him. So I really don't think that reasoning for the DCEU's embrace of Superman as Jesus is particularly solid. The next common response, far more common than that one, in fact I'm still getting a comment or two bringing it up every couple of days, is that actually the Jesus link was there from the beginning, because Jerome Siegel and Joe Schuster named their character Kal-El, which is Hebrew for voice of God, and hence Jesus. And there's actually a fair bit to unpack here. First, there's this weird slippage that seems to be happening in the minds of many fans between Hebrew and Jesus. If I had to guess what's going on here, I'd say to a lot of people, Hebrew's just seen as that language from the Bible, and to a lot of those people, Bible just kinda means Jesus. So let's knock this silliness on its head. Hebrew is a biblical language, but it's not the only one. As a matter of fact, it's mostly found in the Old Testament. The New Testament, with, you know, the Gospels, the Jesus y bits is primarily in Greek, so a Hebrew name really doesn't point toward Jesus in any remotely straightforward way. But in fairness, that's not the full extent of the link most like to make, although there were definitely some who left it there. No, as mentioned above, were you to believe the internet, Kalel actually means voice of God in Hebrew. And who's the voice of God? Well, Jesus, obviously. But as you might have guessed from the way I opened that last sentence, it's not that simple. To begin with, that's not what Kalel would mean. Voice of God would be Kol El, except barely, because while the voice of God is a concept which pops up in ancient Judeo Christian texts, particularly the Tanakh, the phrase which refers to the voice of God isn't Kol El. It's bat coal. And as you might have guessed from the fact it's associated more with the Tanakh than it is with the Gospels, it doesn't really have much to do with Jesus. It is, however, commonly associated with Moses. Funny, that. But I'm sure a couple of you still have a few dregs of copium left in those Jesus Kent pipes, so no, Cal El, literally that is, the light of God, doesn't really point to old Yeshua of Nazareth either. 
Jesus called himself the light of the world a couple of times, but that's a different thing. And it's recorded as a Greek phrase, which I'm not even going to try and pronounce. As you can see though, it's not Kal-El, it's not even Kol-El or Bat-Kol, even if you directly translated any of those phrases from Hebrew. The light of the world is something else entirely. Jesus is something else entirely. Siegel and Schuster weren't, as far as I know, experts in ancient Hebrew phraseology, so the fact that these supposed links aren't exactly one-to-one -one doesn't necessarily mean they weren't going for Superman as the voice or light of God, but it also means it's not the slam dunk QED a lot of people seem to think. Because also, we don't actually know that these honestly kind of garbled translations are why Siegel and Schuster named Superman Kal-El. There is another explanation. The name Kal-El was introduced alongside his father's, Jor-El, initially as with Kal-El, without the E on L, and apparently, source in the description, the origin of this Kryptonian naming convention was a lot less esoteric than is often speculated. Jerome Siegel may have simply named Jor-El after himself. Jerome Siegel. If you take the start and the end, Jor-El. It's an abbreviation. Jor-El was the father of the character in both senses. Now, this explanation isn't total, why Cal, right? But it's worth noting to remind us of the point that drilling down into the names of these characters isn't necessarily going to be a fruitful endeavour. Look, I'm not saying that there's no religious significance to the name Kal-El, that it wasn't intended to be read as Hebrew. It may well have been, at least partially, but that's impossible to prove without a time machine and a polygraph. So the idea that Superman's name was created to invoke anything is really just speculation. Fairly well-founded speculation, but speculation all the same. And this isn't intended as, like, a gotcha or anything. I think it's pretty likely that the Hebrew ring here was intentional. Perhaps as a secondary meaning, thought of after the Jerome Siegel to Jor-El leap had been made. But even if the Hebrew side of this was intended, was what drove Siegel and Schuster to name these characters in this way? Where's Jesus in any of this? Nowhere, really. I ended that first video by noting, extremely briefly, the links some had drawn between the Superman-Jesus linkage and the Christian theology of supersessionism, which is, to boil things down immensely, the idea that all of that Jesus stuff meant that all the promises and covenants God had made with Israel in the Old Testament actually stopped being linked to the Jews and instead transferred over to the Christians. Very convenient. The cultural effects of this principle, more broadly, are that plenty of Christians and people raised culturally Christian don't even consider that, from the Jewish point of view, the New Testament, the fulfilment of the messianic prophecies and all that, a little more than unlicensed fan fiction. And so that large parts of their religious or cultural background were Jewish before they were ever Christian, and indeed continue to be Jewish to plenty of people. So as a result of this widespread, unconscious cultural supersessionism, people might look at stories drawing on Moses and see Jesus. Or people might see a Hebrew phrase loosely translating to voice of God and assume it means Jesus, because who else, right? Supersessionism and the role it may or may not play in today's culture is a somewhat contentious issue, so all I'll say here is the idea that it might play a role in popular conceptions of Superman, the responses some people had to that idea that no, Superman isn't Jesus, have made me pretty sympathetic to the idea. In summation, this video, and indeed the previous one, they're not to say that we should never consider Jesus' symbology when we're thinking about this character, just that it shouldn't be the dominant way of understanding Clark Kent, and that it certainly shouldn't be the default. Oh, and there was one other repeated refrain in response to my previous video. Who cares? And I am sorry to break it to you, but you care. You clicked that thumbnail, over 300,000 of you, and you clicked this one too. You obviously care, at least a little, and I clearly do too, since I, you know, went to the bother of making this. So this might be the weakest point of them all. But that's it for Superman Isn't Jesus 2, Kryptonian Boogaloo. And if you can think of any other reasons in the comments why I'm wrong about this and I'm a stupid idiot, maybe I'll see you all for Superman Isn't Jesus 3 someday. Hope you had a good time though, and thanks as always to my Patreon on screen now, especially Jonathan Francis Bond, Kevin Douglas, and Ian Fifield.